All right guys, Home Depot has had some shakeups with some of the brands that they had in outdoor power equipment, allowing Ryobi to step up and make some awesome, but a little bit more expensive outdoor power equipment tools. We are going to go through this brand new chainsaw top to bottom. I'm gonna show you my experience with it, pretty much raw and uncut from the beginning, but that's not the end of the story. I want you to stick with us, check out the whole video. We got some great stuff on this new saw. Stay tuned. bars. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Looks like thirteen cuts till we got a thermal cutout of some sort. After those thirteen, fourteen cuts, we walk back to the quad. Here we have oil. There's a significant amount, it's leaking down. So even after just initially filling this up and setting it down straight up, just like that, you're gonna end up with this thing leaking. So I come back to the shop to check out the thermal overload. Showed two bars in the field, but back here it's saying this battery is empty. So 14 cuts like that-ish is going to drain a five amp hour battery. So this is a pretty significant leak that was coming directly out of here. And if we look at this, it actually looks very good, clean, nothing there that's wrong. Inside there is a rubber o-ring, probably hard to see on the camera. It looks a little bit like when I turn this guy on here, maybe that it's crooked, just maybe the threads were melted in or cast in. Looks like if I tighten this guy up, never mind this water, this is from snow. If I really crank on that thing, well more than what I'd like to, well, still getting a drip. Well, it looks like we're just gonna put a diaper underneath this because it really doesn't ride well on its side. Maybe it would ride better, nope. It really wants to just sit flat. So we'll just keep the diaper there and keep cutting. With the extra batteries in tow, I wanted to head back out and do some more cutting. And if you have a battery operated chainsaw, I think having multiple batteries or being in this line so you do have multiple batteries for a mower or string trim or something else is somewhat important. These saws work great in most situations for a homeowner or a DIY guy that wants to just go out and trim up trees. But if you get caught in the middle of cutting that tree, your 
waiting for that battery to charge. That's why it's nice to have two. So I have some trees around the property that are dead. I wanted to cut this one down and today it's 20 degrees above average here. I mean, we've been freezing and then just starting to thaw and now we're at a 55, 60 degree day. So the winds variable, things are happening. I started cutting this tree down and the wind changed. And not only was the wind kind of fighting the way the tree was leaning in the first place, so it was going to fall against the lean, and didn't really end up happening that way. And I got lucky uh, completely on that one. I knew there was nothing out there that we could hurt, so when I put that last cut in, I just kind of said, oh baby, and everything worked out perfectly. So I started cutting with this chainsaw again, and again, normal cutting at this point, not just slice, 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 slice. And this thing performs excellent. The chain speed is faster than almost every other battery operated chainsaw that I've used. So you get a little bit more of a gas like feeling where you're revving an engine. Now the brushless motor makes it interesting to a point because it does not have a brake on it at all. It allows this chain to free spool. So as I'm up and moving around between cuts, I was always taught while you're moving, push the chain brake forward. So if you tripped in with the gas saw, hit the uh, trigger, your throttle didn't go up and the chain starts spinning and you get hurt. So as I'm doing it, I'm finding myself pushing that chain brake forward while the chain's still spinning. Not a big deal at all. Right, that's what it's made for, and that's what you should do. But that gives you an idea of how long that chain is spinning, which is a little bit longer than what I would say a gas chainsaw would spin for, because I'm not normally doing that with my gas chainsaws. But either way, it cuts fast, it cuts well, and the battery life out of cutting that tree down and cutting it up is pretty significant. I still have three full bars left on this battery and it's just another five amp hour battery. So when used properly and not used as a, you know, something that's constant, this has excellent battery life. And I think that's great, especially for a homeowner who wants a little bit more of a gas-like powered saw. And I absolutely despise that term gas-like, um, but that's where we're getting. And there are, this is not going to compare to any commercial gas powered saws out there. It's going to compare to your low end gas powered saws. And with this box, the first thing I thought of was the uh, Poulin Wild Thing. And I think this would very easily compete with that saw as far as uh, chain speed and cutting and pretty much power for what I'm going through. So great comparison. This box is awesome. The saw works great, although I know I had a couple flaws. Let's come in and take a look at it and go over everything. I'll show you a couple more things that for me are great and also maybe a little bit of a stretch. All right, let's start at the back of this saw. Now you have this safety that you have to pull back before you can pull the trigger. If you don't pull that back, nothing will happen with the trigger. Trigger is absolutely smooth. There's no big click. I love it. This is how all Ryobi tools should have their trigger. But what I find is I have very large hands. So if I want to run this with one hand, or if I want to get back a little bit on my grip or change it up, I got to pull this, hit the trigger, and then change the grip. If you had smaller hands, this might be a stretch for you, or you're going to be forward using two fingers on the trigger. Not a big deal, just something for me that I noticed, you know, when you run a gas saw, you don't have these style of safeties, but either way, it works just well. Obviously we messed with this cap. You have a pretty clear line in here that'll tell you how much oil you have. There's six ounces that this holds. Obviously this leaked a little bit. This handle around here is all plastic, not a big deal. You can see that this is meant to sit here and here when it's sitting on the ground. And that's good. In bad, it does not want to sit sideways, which is not that big of a deal. It can sit like that. I'm not used to always setting my saws down like this most of the time uh, because the gas ones, we won't compare, but either way, it's not happy in too many other places. In the back, you do have your scrunch, screwdriver, and wrench. This is going to be 
how you will adjust the chain. And after our first use, there is a ton of oil coming out here. I mean a ton, but we're just getting to the point where we need to adjust this. So the adjustment is going to be simple. These were not tight from the factory. You can simply turn this little lever here and adjust everything up. It's pretty simple. There you go. That's it. Put your scrunch back, life's good. As far as other things that this works on, nothing to this point. You can buy other Ryobi chains. This is a low kickback chain. It's a 3 8 chain. I think you could bump up a little bit as far as uh, how the chain goes. Um, low kickback chains usually don't cut that fast and this does have the speed to go through everything and it does have the power to a point so I think you could bump up a chain if you wanted to give it a try. You do have a chain break as I talked before and as you'll see me use this as I walk around. It works well, it's very positive, even, I mean it's more than just a trigger chain break, you can hear it, it is also mechanical and that's the way this should be. Now the case that comes with this guy, to me, if you're looking for a case, is pretty awesome. There are a few things with battery operated stuff that I guess I would consider changing, but that's only because I'm kind of just sitting here begging for something a little bit more than what they have. So, I guess what you have to do first is put this on right. Apologize. Once this is in place, you can snap this front piece over. Everything's good. You would probably want to store your battery in here. There, here's where I would change something. You put this up, you guys can't see anything inside, but you basically have a place for your battery and charger just to hang out on top of the tool. You don't really have something where you could slide a battery in. So right here, instead of having this open, or even right here, we could have made a nice slide where this battery just slides in and closes up. And as you notice, when we roll this over, we could probably store, well, we could at least store one extra battery back here and probably still fit our charger here and a battery in the saw if we wanted to. Pretty balanced for a case. This works great. It's going to keep everything as it should be. Case opens up. I think a lot of people are going to like this because it's going to keep everything in one package. Grab onto it, go, travel with it, do your hunting, do whatever you need to. This rocks. You can modify it and that's what's good about this. So as far as a Ryobi chainsaw goes, it's amazing. I've seen some Ryobi chainsaws that have a chain that's just way too slow and this one is on the other end of just high-end performance out there. I think that's great. A six amp hour battery with this thing would absolutely rock it and I think that's what this should have came with. Didn't. Obviously that would probably bump the price up again and you know I mean there's always that balance between uh, something that people look at as Ryobi for the DIY side and then the price of it but this saw uh, rocks. For you guys who purchase it, I do not think you will be disappointed. I think I have a one of one problem with the leak. Again, that is easily fixable with a little silicone in the cap. I'm going to work through that. Just fix it up a little bit or put a little thicker O-ring in there. Not that big of a deal, just something that came up inside the review. Guys, if you have questions, ask me below. I appreciate that. If you've watched this whole video, I appreciate you sticking around with us. Give us a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, have a great day.